and to stabilize its APIs. Emanuele Bassi did a talk yesterday about these changes from the point of view of introspection, annotations and library APIs, but I'll be talking today about it from the point of view of Glib, apps, language bindings and distros. The work for this merge was funded by the Sovereign Tech Fund, the STF, um, and it was to help with keeping our fundamental inf infrastructure up to date. I'll go through the problems, what the problems were with the old arrangement, what we changed, and how it impacts on apps and bindings and distros. So the project and the idea was to when GObject Inspection was started as a project, it was deliberately started outside of the GLib Git tree uh, in order to allow it to incubate. And the idea was to eventually merge it in. So 10 plus years later, we've now done that. The previous status quo of having it be out of tree worked okay, but it made for slow iteration because the introspection data for GLib was generated in the GObject introspection build. So it was in a separate module and that had to be periodically and manually updated from GLib. This made for a lot of busy work, but it also meant that GLib couldn't use any of its introspection data internally, for example, for building documentation. So what is GeoObject Inspection? Um, it's, it's formed of various libraries, formats, and utilities. So there's a brief list of the main ones there on the slide. They come together to allow you to take a C library that you've written, to scan its source code to extract the API definitions using GIR Scanner, um, and that will then produce a GIR, which is an XML file. You can then use GIR Compiler, uh, which is another utility, to compile that GIR file into an architecture-dependent binary typelib format file. Language bindings then load these typelib files when you import a module in um, a, another program or a library written in a bound language. Finally, libgi repository is kind of a helper library, but it's public, and it provides programmatic access to read and to write the typelib format. So most bindings will use libgi repository to read the typelib files, and JR compiler, the utility, uses it to generate them. So merging the two, we've got our components here, which are in our two different modules. Um, and you'd think that we just move all of the ones that are in, all of the components here, out of GeoObject Inspection and move them into GLib and then we're done, right? No. Um, JR Scanner, which is the, the utility that scans your source code and generates the XML file, the GIR file, um, it's because it needs to pass C source code, uh, it's written in a mixture of all sorts of things, C Python, uh, Python, Flex, Bison, um, and as a result it needs quite a lot of dependencies in order to be able to compile and be compiled. In particular it needs the Python development headers. So moving that into GLib would add those dependencies to GLib and that would be quite a big and unacceptable change. So approach two. This is the approach we actually took. Uh, it's basically to merge half of GeoObject inspection into GLib. Um, so we move the GI repository and the GIR compiler into GLib, but the GIR scanner stays in the GeoObject introspection project. Um, this means we've essentially split the kind of introspection pipeline into the parts which generate these GIR files, which stay in GeoObject Geo introspection, and the parts which consume the GIR files, which have moved into GLib. Uh, and they will consume those GR files and then generate and read the type of files. In terms of API changes, I think the most important thing to note is there have been no changes to the type lib or the JR formats. So all of the tools and libraries from before this move should be interoperable with all of the ones after this move because they all use exactly the same formats. We have, however, made a number of API changes to libgi repository and the utilities when we move them into GLib. 
um, to tidy things up and to improve the APIs and make them more usable and conformant to modern standards. In particular, the GI repository, it's it had a homegrown homegrown type system and that's been replaced with the more standard G-type instance. Um, the new version of libgi repository and all of the utilities are completely parallel and installable with the old version so consumers of the old versions can continue to use those old versions even whilst other consumers like other bindings can use the new versions uh, and the old versions with their old names and versions uh, continue to be shipped with geobject inspection for the moment um, and there is a full list of API changes uh, and renames and all of the migration, migration information you might need uh, in a migration page in the GLEB documentation. <coughs> so what does this mean for me as an app developer? Uh, if you're an app developer, you don't need to do anything at all. That's great. Um, none of the pipeline for building the GR files has changed. So you could move from GIR compiler to GI compile repository, which is the old version of the utility to the new version, uh, and that's the utility that turns your GIR files into type loops. But there's actually no pressing need to. Uh, there's no functionality change there. It's just a rename and the source code moving. So just use whatever your build system makes it easy to use. For Meson at the moment, this is GIR compiler, which is the old version via uh, the generate JR function in the Meson Go module. If you are a binding developer, you don't need to do anything immediately. You may want to put an item on your roadmap for porting to the new version of libgi repository, um, but it's not critical. Because of the API changes in it, this will require numerous small code changes. Um, many of those can be made mechanically, but because of the number of them um, supporting both versions of libgi repository via a compile time option uh, in your binding is probably not feasible. There'd just be too many if defs. Um, but because the type lib format hasn't changed, you don't need to coordinate porting with other binaries, uh, bindings or with distros. Um, so just do it according to your own timeline. Uh, porting should, however, mean that you end up with cleaner code overall uh, due to the various API improvements we've made. Um, so you might want to do it for that reason. If you do port and you find parts of the API which are still awkward to use or which could do with improvement, please let us know by filing an issue against GLib and we'll see what we can do about it. For distros, there'll be a one-time change um, which uh, the details of which are sort of fully listed in the GLib 2.79 and 2.80 release notes. Um, but the, the key changes are the new version of the libgi repository library it should be fairly straightforward as an addition because it's parallel installable with the old one. Um, the other main change is the change to glib build, uh, which is a little bit more involved. So um, basically, instead of being built once, your glib package now needs to be built twice. It needs to be built once without introspection support, and then you need to build gobject inspection to get GIR scanner available, and then you need to rebuild glib with introspection support so that it can use the scanner you've just built to extract its own API definitions and then generate its documentation. Um, so that makes it a bit more complicated. Distros should have a way of dealing with bootstrapping problems like this already, um, but unfortunately that's one of the downsides of this move. Um, but again, because the new and old versions are parallel installable, you shouldn't need a flag day uh, transition in your distribution until you want to stop packaging the old versions. So again, you can schedule that at your leisure. Um, what does this mean for you if you're a GLib maintainer, like uh, me? Um, it's made the CI and build system somewhat more complicated for GLib because we now have to be careful about providing overrides for tools like GI Compile Repository. Um, so to make sure that we're using the utilities that we've just built within the build in order to build our own type libs. 
Um, it also means we potentially have to build geobject inspection in CI, um, but both of those problems are solvable. On the flip side, and the, the big advantage here is it means we've able, been able to port to GI DocGen, so a new documentation tool, um, which has made the documentation for glib much more modern and it can now happily go up on docs.gtk.org and sit alongside modern documentation for other libraries without looking out of place. Um, so that's a big advantage and the, the reason we needed to do this change in order to allow that is because GI DocGen builds its documents based on the API descriptions in introspection files. Uh, rather than by passing source code. So what's next? Um, for now this is the end of the big rearrangements and any kind of work we do from now on will be more about stabilization and tidying things up. Um, for example by adding more unit tests because historically libgi repository has not really had many even though it's kind of a key component in our language binding story. Um, Porting the GLib documentation to GI DocGen has been done at a high level, but there's still a lot of individual documentation comments which might need syntax and formatting tweaks and rewriting to best make use of the features that GI DocGen provides us now. So help is very welcome on that, um, and it's, it's work which is very suitable for drive-by contributions. Uh, for example, if, if you just want to improve the piece of documentation you are reading at the moment, so please do get in touch. The scanner side of geobject inspection is now going to get louder and more opinionated um, in an effort to Im improve the introspectability of things um, in the projects you run it on, but you'll have to watch Emanuele's talk from yesterday to hear more about that. So that's an overview of what's changed and why. Um, there's a bit more information in the issues linked here and the migration guide. Um, and if you've got any questions, now's the time to ask them. Thanks very much. Hello.